What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here, and today we're gonna spectate a ranked match. Um, first of all, look, it's the first time I've been over 1900 in probably like more than a month. Um, yeah, that's cool. So, there is already one I had in mind. It's starting in a second. I think it's gonna be a good match. Kryl, Krill, probably Kryl, is the E at the end, versus King Kiwi 10. King Kiwi, um, in the Badger Guild, so we'll be rooting for him, but uh, it should be a good match um, because Decay versus Energy sometimes, if it's stru Structure Energy, it's a it's like a race for Decay, and it could it can make for some really interesting matches. And um, uh, King Kiwi is pretty highly rated, and Kryl is not too bad either, so we're going to watch this match. Let's see what the hands are looking like. Um, okay, so Kryle, we don't really tell much from his hand right here. It looks like a standard Decay deck. Um, like, we would know something's up if, like, we see a lot of poison, like Infectious Blight or Bubble and Taint. But, um, looks like pretty standard cards. I mean, if there's a Watcher in the deck, this is probably, like, a normal Mono Decay deck that, that I've been using in rank lately. And Blinky likes to use, just like Full on Power. Um, and King Kiwi, we'll have to see if he's running Structure Energy, Range Energy. Kryl probably hopes that he's running Range Energy because this kid does not have a good time against Structure Energy, but they could still win with well-timed Necrogeddons with Watchers and stuff. So, um, I... Yeah, I'm gonna move the mess up a little. So I think that Kryl should... He's going first. So the Languid might not be that useful because uh, King Kiwi doesn't have a high chance of putting down a turn one unit. I mean, he doesn't know what faction King Kiwi is yet. And um, so I, I would, if I were him, I would mulligan because turn two Watcher you wouldn't really want to do. And your first creature, Blight Bearer, turn three is not the best. Um, whenever you're Decay, I like to mulligan uh, if I don't have either a Ripper or a Tribesman. Tribesman is the best. The four health for two costs early in the game is amazing. Now let's get let's get some music on here. Um, I'm not sure if that's good. I think that's good. Right. Game start. Let's, let's leave and come back. Uh, ranked refresh. Oh no, it starts in a sec. Okay. So. And also, but maybe Kryl won't, won't want to draw new hands or mulligan because he's going first and he will draw a card. When the game starts, he'll draw a card. I believe. So. And, uh. So, if we, we'll do this for these, like, last, like, 20 seconds before the match. Um. Based on their avatars, uh. I do like Kryl's head more. That's the head I use. Not for long, though, because I won. I won one of the ESL avatar heads, so that will be given to me for wa with waypoints, I believe. Um, but King Kiwi here has the uh, has the avatar he bought in the store, so that's impressive. So he mulligans there, he had a damage curse, but now there's a much better starting hand. He can go Ripper, and then you want to keep that Soul Steel because energy usually has stuff uh, you can Soul Steel, Order, Decay sometimes, Growth, so Soul Steel is really strong. All right, and then it is Structure Energy, so this should be an interesting match. Um, King Kiwi has a very good starting hand. Uh, useless Contraptions. Um, I don't want to. That was interesting. I'm not sure why King Kiwi put that in the back there. Useless Contraption is what you want in the front. If you want to protect another structure, you can use that. But I'm really surprised King Kiwi put Useless Contraption right way in the back there. Um, and Kryl a top deck a two drop, so he's going to want to play that, especially against Structure Energy. You want to just keep the flow of creatures. And because of Structure Energy, you probably sacrifice the Soul Steel here because there's. Interesting. I would have sacrificed the Soul Steel because. Uh, I mean, yes, there are hired smugglers, but you want to have a creature curve, and the five health uh, hunter is really good to have. Sacrifice the state machine, another interesting choice. Um, if I was King Kiwi, I would have actually kept both useless contraptions because I, he had a machine chant too. So if you can go useless contraption, useless contraption, forge machine chant, or not forge clock ladder machine chant, that would be really awesome. So Cryo looks like he has a pretty decent start. Um, but King Kiwi does, is able to get probably a Forge out now. Is it like a little bit of glitch out? Right. Or, you can, or can get a State Machine out. I think that you want to get the Forge out here. Probably, you might want to go middle, middle, right? I'm, I'm not a fan of also putting Forge right in, like not in the front row. I probably would have put it down here or something. Um, so now, see he had to, now he can, he can Soul Steal. No, he can't, what am I talking about? He, yeah, he, 
if he had more resources, he could have played the Hunter this turn from before. So, and that's five health. These guys are really weak. Energy just destroys two health creatures. Thunder Surge, Thunder Eruption, Burns, all that stuff. Sacrifices the Clock Library. That's probably what I would do there also. And burn. And now this coming turn, he can Machine Chant this Ripper. Uh, and Cryo only has three resources, but he's probably going to sacrifice a Soul Steel for the Ilmar Hunter. Wants to keep the Witch Doctor because Witch, the Witch Doctor is a real big VD magnet. Interesting. Cryo sacrifices it. And gets a harvester, that was a nice top deck, but I think you'd want to get that human out and get to that witch doctor as fast as possible. Now he's at three resources, and the Necrogen is oh so far away. See, these are the interesting games that uh, Structure Energy vs. Deck has, but it's not, even though Structure Energy has the edge, it's not like, and I would have kept the Forge there too. Okay, so there's the Machine Chant, but the harvesters are counting down. Now he has two witch doctors, now he really wishes he kept that, uh, that Ilmar Hunter. Um... Necrogun, you gotta keep the Necroguns versus uh, Structure Energy, that's how you win. But, um, yeah, he, I'm not sure, sure why he's sticking to that Soul Steel. he's just hoping he plays a Hired Smuggler, like, so I don't know, I think King Kiwi, I think Kral had an opportunity to be, come ahead in this game, but he kind of missed his chance by sacrificing the wrong scrolls, like, still, you gotta keep the Damning Curse for the Machine Divinator, he hasn't, you get, He's clinging to that soul steal really hard. Um, and King Kiwi is slowly putting more stuff on the board, but he's not. King Kiwi doesn't have the game yet. Uh, he has. He is ramping up. Now he's going to be at 7 resources. Yeah, I would have done that also. Get another Aether Pump out, slowly kill everything, and get a Machine Diviner out. And Kryl sacrifice the. Uh, sacrifice the. Uh, uh, Damn Curse. So now we can finally get a Witch Doctor out. Uh, now, come on, just sacrifice the soul steal. Actually, maybe not because you can soul steal this. So actually, actually start, probably sacrifice the tribesman um, because now you can soul steal the gun on upside after this attacks it. Um, oh, but yeah, that, that's what he should have done. All right. So now, so in next turn when he gets another witch doctor out, then King Kiwi is gonna have four big targets that he has to destroy, and he already used a couple burns, a machine chant. Um, so it's gonna be tough. King Kiwi running charge coils. That's not always running such energy. I don't personally use it, but I could see why it could be cool. Um, burn is not the best for King Kiwi here because he's not going to draw a card unless he he could burn like the little dark and then use the gun on it to destroy the husk. But that would just count down both harvesters by two. I don't think he wants to do that. So yeah, probably want to go with the Solemn Giant and pump it up. Maybe put Pusher Resistance on something, but I don't think that's worth it. You want to keep that card in hand for to be able to sack next turn. Um, probably want to wait on the burn because this Ether Pump is going to go off next turn and then both harvesters are going to be at three health where you can burn one of them. And he does go for the Potion of Resistance. I guess he's worried about a Necrogen possibly destroying that, which is fine, but uh, if he Necrogens, then Crowell would be put at a little disadvantage anyways because then he could be open to Thunder Surges and stuff. But uh, here, you probably want to maybe, probably sacrifice the Rot Eater. Rot Eater is a burn magnet too. Maybe you just, you probably want to Soul, you want to get these Harvesters to attack before they act. So you're probably going to want to Soul Steal the Gun on Baton. Well, first, First, you sacrifice the Rider for cards to see what you get. You could try to sacrifice the Witch Doctor cards and go with the Soul Steel in this and play the Rot Eater, but I think you want to uh, get a second Witch Doctor out because you want as many big creatures as possible. Because energies, I mean, structure energy is a whole different thing because they have so many things that deal damage ether pumps, charge coils, uh, all sorts of stuff, sparks, burns, all that stuff. But really, usually, if you have a creature with four health or more, it's going to be uh, hard to destroy. But. He sacrifices the Witch Doctor. Well, he's going to be able to get a third Harvester out this turn. I'd uh, probably Harvester Soul Steel this turn. Once he gets a third Harvester out, I mean, if he destroys one Harvester, King Kiwi, then he has other Harvesters attacking. But it definitely looks like King Kiwi has given himself a nice, a nice position. And he does not. Interesting. Plays a Rot Eater and a Ripper. That is. That is. I don't agree with that. Ooh, sudden eruption. I think you this is tough. This is a tough call for him. He could go with the burn, draw a card, and sacrifice that one because he would. Okay, sacrifices for scrolls. I would have probably burned maybe the rot eater. And interesting. I probably would have maybe sacrifice uh, bounce burst with witch doctor, but it's his call. But uh, maybe if you burn the rot eater, then you don't have to sacrifice a burn because you draw a card and then you sacrifice that. But he had a sudden eruption anyway, so I guess what he did worked out. Uh, two soul steals for Cryer. 
Um, yeah, so that was a really good soul steal. Counts down the harvester and destroys this, but he, what he should, probably should have done is played the harvester before that soul steal, because then the harvester would be at one less countdown. Every little bit matters with structure energy. You got to keep it coming, um, and definitely get the harvester down because this ethereum is going to destroy this, this, and that. So that's going to bring that down to two. It would have been down to one, which would be, which would help for a soul steal next turn to make it go off if he played it before that soul steal. So these little things might add up for Cryo. I think. Uh, I think he definitely had the cards to come ahead in this game. Definitely had the right scrolls to win, but I'm not sure if he played his hand quite quite well. Um, and it, that is strange. I think you should definitely destroy the thing that's spawning the gun on next turn. Whatever. All right. So now you gotta you gotta sudden eruption. You have to sacrifice a resource and sudden eruption. I would have kept both sudden eruption. But if you sudden eruptioned, then you have a really good chance. Of the ether from destroying that harvester anyways then you destroy all this uh, and you could destroy it. i think you should have sudden eruptioned uh what he did wasn't that bad though but now there's a huge rod eater and a harvester attacking this still has post resistance i'm surprised that still has post resistance but now Kral's going to be able to wipe this row right in the middle um and he's an again so he will probably maybe damage curse the machine divinator and play a tribesman so maybe move you here move you here uh, try not to clump up because the thunder surges so move like maybe wish doctor up put a shotgun in front um, I do think that Both players are making mistakes here and there, but uh, I Tend to make these mistakes sometimes too Just not getting like the maximum Like the max the best play all the time like just hmm, what's he doing? All right, so we'll probably move this Hmm. So he really he wants to get like Don Automaton. Okay. I guess that's that. I guess that's fine. Um, because you're still destroying. I mean, this useless crafter is kind of useless. <laughs> All right. So now you got a sudden eruption. You have a sudden eruption here. Yeah. Sacrifice resources. Then it's five things. Everything gets hit. That was the perfect play because now this ether is going to destroy the harvester and the witch doctor. So, but now there's eleven attack. Rot Eater, so if King Kiwi is not able to destroy that Rot Eater soon, then it could deal some massive idle damage, and that's how Decay wins these matches. And Karl has to keep hold of the Darker Gun, sacrifices uh, a Damon Curse, but he'll probably, probably, maybe Damon Curse and Darkling this turn, first Damon Curse, then Darkling. It would destroy this, which is a nice for a Necro Gun, so maybe he won't do that, but you gotta stop these Ether Bombs from going off so often. And King Kiwi is top decking now. Okay, so he puts down a Rot Eater. That's fine. But those Ether Pumps are going off really fast. I mean, this guy was going to die anyways from the, from the Ether Pump. So, I mean, the Damage Curse wouldn't have been that bad. So here's the Charge Coil. Machine Chant. That is a good card for him. But he's unfortunately probably going to want to save it for this 6 health Rot Eater. And he only has 3 structures on the board. So we might see him actually Machine Chant this. Yeah, just get more ramp, but he is top decking, so it's not going too well for King Kiwi right now. Um, both of them is 13 7 Rod Eater is pretty strong. Now, this you gotta move down the Rod Eater and destroy this Ether Pump. It's going off next turn. Um, and uh, finally, he has something to Soul Steal. What, maybe a Damning Curse and Soul Steal turn? Why Soul Steal? Is he not gonna Damning Curse this turn? He should have. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because no, this is gonna be destroyed. So, really, I don't think that one extra health or one extra attack on that big rod dude already is gonna help. He definitely should have uh, damage curse and then soul stole because when you soul steal, you get the fire shambler and that just gets destroyed by the other thing you put out. And King Kiwi not top decking what he needs. He needs structures. He needs to fill up the board again and take back this game. Uh, Kral should probably sacrifice. I would have sacrificed Elmire Trizen, but I guess it's okay because he drew another Necker again. You want to keep a Necker again for when you could possibly win. And he's Kral's just holding on with his Rod Eater. King Kiwi wants a Violent Dispersal so badly. If he gets a Violent Dispersal, that'd be perfect for King Kiwi. And he does not get it. Uh, just he at least he gets structures to fill up the board. But you see, King Kiwi's smart. He's making sure uh, Kral cannot have a one hit on an idol. Um, but now he is able to, he can't destroy the Ether Pump because it has 
plus resist. And you see, he is running Bloodline Taints and Draining Mist. So this is not like a super standard Decay deck, but it's pretty common. Um, and here, yeah, you could Draining Mist, but really just to put off uh, Ether Pump is not that worth it, I don't think. So you get down the Life Stealer, which is awesome. Another big creature that King Kiwi has to deal with. Five health, hard to destroy. Uh, probably sacrifice, yeah. Ooh, there is the Mount Special. Perfect. Right before it gets to 9 health, because Mount Special only does 8, eight, eight damage now. So that was a clutch Mount Special for King Kiwi. I think he was bound to get it because he. I don't think he even drew one yet. And gets down the. Another structure, the Mortar. So. You could have put the. Uh, the Machine Diviner down there either. So. They could have put either down. And now. He doesn't have a Necrogun. So I'm not sure why Kryle got rid of the Necrogun. That's like the one way to win this game. Now that he lost that. Now that they lost that uh, giant rot eater, um, probably wants to hold on to the draining mist because you know he might still want to slow down the clock robber or the ether pump. But he does have a four health, hunt, uh, whatever that guy is, life steal attacking next turn. So now here, he doesn't really have much he could do. Probably, yeah, play a bugbear obviously, and maybe yeah, link with this. But it doesn't really help much. And there's a watcher. He could. But he sacrifices Necroguns. He really shouldn't sacrifice his Necroguns. Um, yeah, he could, he could put the wild. He could put that right there. But King Kiwi would probably quick to destroy. He is top decking though. And here it's tough, tough sacrifice. Uh, now that he drew another Machine Diviner, he might have rather had a Forge. But I mean, you can't go wrong with a Donator or a Forge. And let's see, is King Kiwi going to play the last card? He does. Um, I mean, yeah, you get another scroll in the field, but then you're top decking, so it's really, maybe you do, maybe you don't want to do it. You could Draining Mist to stop a lot of things from counting down next turn, but we'll have to see what else he gives. He has a Soul Steal for that, for this, for the Smuggler. Um, probably, Sacrifice the Soul Steal, okay. Because what he could do is he could Bloodline Taint the Divinators and give one of them Brain Lice to destroy them. That could be an option. You probably want to use the life steal to destroy the useless contraption so that he can heal up to five health. And maybe you get a you definitely maybe you'll play witch doctor because there's all humans on the board this turn. What I would do probably yes yeah, move the life stealer right here, destroy that, and just put a witch doctor where the life stealer is right now. It's probably all I would do. But he, he is going for the human bloodline taint, and he's probably going to go for the brain lice now interesting hitting that and that does not fully heal the life stealer and he does draining miss this turn i thought he was going to save the draining miss for when possibly this ether pump and this clock cover are going to count down together but we'll see solemn giant for king kiwi doesn't want to top deck that because he could he, he doesn't want to sacrifice it but oh well um thunder surge and burn once they get rid of that watcher be is as King Kiwi just has to, he King Kiwi is a really good spot. Kryle made some misplays early so that he wasn't able to deal enough idle damage. Because what you want to do as Decay versus Structure Energy, you want to deal as much damage as possible before before the structures uh, start filling up the board. Because then you could just start solely win with Watchers and and uh, and Low Darklings. But so. Kryle is able to destroy the clock cover before it goes down, so that's pretty awesome for him. But it doesn't look like it's going to go too well for Kryle the whole match, though, because now this Ether Pump goes off and destroys this Blight Bearer, and there's a Machine Chant for him. And Machine Chant, there's only three structures on the board, so it does not. Oh, yeah, you can put the Mortar down, that's a good play. You can put the Mortar down, that's four structures, and then I can destroy this with a Machine Chant. So you see. Um, now, Kryle probably lost the game. He was in it in the beginning because he had a really good hand to really combat the structures and just pump out units. But I don't think, I think he got in a cycle of sacrificing for cards where he didn't go for the Witch Doctor with the Hunter and he went for like Harvesters, which are good, but then they just died when King Kiwi started to get the right cards. So I don't think Kryle's going to be able to come back in this game with all these structures on the board now. Um, if he was able to, he would, if he could come back in this game, let's say if he destroyed two idols and there's just six off idol, but, uh, now King Kiwi, yeah, gets a state machine, now just keep filling up the board until you think you're at a really safe spot to start pinging idols with Solemn Giant. Well, that was almost a witch doctor kill. 
in my structure energy deck, I put um, my only win con is two win cons. I have, I guess, three, but I have Psalm Giant as a main guy. Then I have um, whatever they're called, Metal Wonders. Metal Wonders are really cool. They're not. Some people don't like them. I, I like them. They seem to get the job done usually. And then there's gun automatons that are spawned from spawned from automated forges. But the, like that's like kind of the standard structure energy deck now. Like m months ago, like half a year ago, a year ago, not a whole year ago, like half a year ago. Um, structure energy was more like it was by far it was more creatures. It had it had I had Machinated, Cannonetta, um, Solemn, not Solemn, yeah, I had Solemn Giant, Stormrunner, Bombard, so, it doesn't look like King Kiwi is playing any Oculus Cannons, that's interesting, I like Oculus Cannons in my Structure Energy, but I guess he has Oculus Cannons in, and I, he has Charge Curls in, and I have Oculus Cannons, so, I guess that's how it works, and... Kral just has to hold on. To, if he wants to win, the only way he could possibly win, probably for Kral, is if he just holds on to like all his Watchers and all his Darklings, and tries to like get enough resources to have a huge turn and get lucky with King Kiwi not having a turn to react and be able to go with like a big Watcher get and, and then Darklings everywhere. That's the only way Kral could win this now. Um, and interesting, he moves up to destroy this State Machine. He should probably move down to destroy the Ether Problem because this is going to die anyways in a few turns. You're gonna have to destroy these structures because you can't get to the idols. See now that we're in round 21, King Kiwi has 11 resources. He's gonna, I mean, unless he gets really, really, really bad draws, he's gonna be able to keep filling the board and start pinging on us with Solemn Giant. So this is the point where I would probably surrender if I was Decay, because I realized I didn't do enough damage in the early game to be able to compete in the late game. But yeah. People do, like, I think people overestimate the power of Structure Energy versus Decay. People think sometimes it's, like, an easy win for Structure Energy. It's really not. Decay has, like, a lot of direct auto damage, and they can sometimes really be, they can win a lot. Uh, like, when I'm playing with Decay, uh, I probably win, like, almost out of time or even more with Decay against Structure Energy. Um, and I lose sometimes when I'm Structure Energy to Decay, but... I do think uh, that Church Energy has the advantage. Maybe not as much as much as everybody thinks. I think a more, a little bit more unfair matchup than Structure Energy versus Decay is Decay versus Growth. Growth has no way of getting faster with Shocker besides an extremely lucky Rumble. That's it. Growth just can't. Like so, that is more of a Rock Paper Scissors -ish issue than Structure Energy versus Decay. Kral gets down the, the Watcher. I mean. Yes, I don't think I don't think he should have done that. If you want to, if the only chance of winning, he has to save it. He has to save it, um, because these guys are are just going to be destroyed by the ether pump that he ether pump that he could have destroyed before. So the ether, ether pump is just to kill these guys, and ether pump is not does not trigger watcher because that, believe it or not, ether pump and charge girl, it does count as combat damage. So it does health better mortar because it's like the structure is dealing damage. It's not like a spell. But, so, and King Kiwi, I'm sure when he has a chance, he's just going to destroy this chart, this Watcher. So, uh, yeah. And making sure he's, there's another big Rot Eater, but now there's no way he's going to hit any idols. King Kiwi's done a very good job this match of not letting Kral touch the idols. Because some players, Shark Giant is a, a weird deck to play, because you're trying to... You're trying to fill the board and get board control, because that's how you kind of win. But what you can't do is you can't just try to get... Sometimes it, pe people say, like, let's protect three idols. You just The opponent needs to destroy three idols to win. That's true. But against a deck like Decay, it might be able to destroy a third, to destroy a third idol without even attacking it directly. So you want to, distract, to, to protect all the idols. I've been in the position on both sides of the match where that only protecting three idols by the structure energy player has gone wrong like i've won with decay by doing that and i've lost with structure energy by doing that so i like how kink because losing one structure isn't is much more uh is 
is far less important than losing like an idol. But King Kiwi is hoping to get something to just actually destroy this uh, watcher. Um, didn't get one yet, but I guess Thundershirt wouldn't be too bad to put on that big chunk in the middle, and then he might get lucky and get a charge troll to hit it. But I guess he's going to wait because. Yeah, waiting is fine because this charge troll might be able to hit it right now and then Thundershirt's next turn will destroy it, but Okay. Double Harvester. You probably just play double harvester. Or not. Oh, there's a necker again. Let's see. I mean if I were him, I would curse something and rip her necker again now. Just try to get maybe destroy one idol and get like free twenty gold. Just milk some gold out of this match. Because he doesn't have enough units on the board. Uh, and there's too many structures on King Kiwi's board for Kraus to actually win. So yeah, he's going for it. And sadly, he does not destroy Nettle. But he is going to be able to... Actually, I take back what I said. I think that Necrogun actually raises his percent chance of winning from like 0 to like 1. I think he has a very small chance now. Because... Or maybe even more than a very small chance. Because King Kiwi... Well, actually he's Von Sparsel, so he can... I would have, I would have kept the oh, the top deck a burn luckily, so he can destroy that watcher. Now he gets hurt. Now he can now, now Kryl probably gonna lose. But if King Kiwi did not have anything to destroy those guys, then if Kryl top deck another another Necro gun, he could win. So yeah, Kryl almost made it back, and then another another Necro gun. So just get out the Darkling and the Harvester. Um, you could draining mist, but I don't know. Probably want to keep that card in hand, drain miss for next turn, or just to keep so you can sacrifice the next turn. But he does use it. Uh, if, if you're again an Ekrigan, maybe it's not. So yeah, it's smart him to put the Carl is smart to put the put the Darkling on middle row because that's the fourth idol. And to win, he's probably gonna have to destroy these two idols and then use Darkling to destroy the middle idol. Um, but King Kiwi is able to destroy the Harvester, and it's not looking too good for Kryl. And he's top decking, and he's not getting the cr enough creatures. He really needs a lot of creatures. I never get no watcher, but <sighs> looks pretty bleak for Kryl. So I think this is a good. This was a good match to pick to spectate. Um, I hope it was a. I hope it's a entertaining video, and you learned something from it. But I'm not sure. Do you guys like? Kind of these longish matches to be spectated because this might go for like 35 minutes because king kiwi probably can't win that quickly as a song i don't see anything else that can win besides hired smugglers um automata forges and stuff so we'll see um and he's gonna king he's gonna get a bunch of cards next turn oh hell spitter mortar Fine, I think it's the first Hellspitter Mortar hit this entire game. There's been two Hellspitter Mortars going off every turn. So, I guess you just... I mean, if you put the Dark Knight, just in a dot. So, I mean, fine. I mean, Kral probably realizes he, lo realizes he lost. So, he puts it down and just gets 20 gold for it to die. Because, I mean, the Aetherum's gonna hit it. And then Charge Call has to hit it because there's nothing else to hit. So, and Brain Lace on the Solemn Giant. Okay, that's fine, I guess. And King Kiwi, probably, yeah, definitely gonna pump that guy to start doing idle damage. He wants to, he wants to win this match. Sacrifice for resources, play, or scrolls, yeah. Um, I would have sacrificed for resources because there's so many cards in hand. And a forge, do some more damage. Probably would have put the forge in front there, but it doesn't really matter. Up, <laughs> hit it. Didn't even have to hit it. Would have died anyways. It would have died anyways. But that mortar's on a tear. Two straight hits for that mortar, I think. <sighs> this is a part of the game which doesn't really matter if it hits. Um, probably sacrifice the Necker again. One Necker again. I mean, you like to have two so you can go back to back on a Watcher. But, okay, he keeps two, but no point in Necker if you don't have creatures. Okay. And now, let's see what's going to happen. So definitely pump that. You should only pump this. You're, you're gonna want to pump it. Pump it and machine chant, machine chant the witch doctor and pump the giant. 
and just hit the middle idle. That's probably what I would do. Um, yeah, so machine chant and then pump. Yep, that's what I would do, King Kiwi. And then hopefully he'll, he'll be able to destroy an idol with this smuggler next turn. So I can first scrolls after things. Maybe you want to just start sacrificing for resources. It doesn't really matter. He has 12 resources, 7 cards. That's like awesome. Um, Carl has a lot of resources, but not the creatures to play with Necrogans, though. Um, probably want the Soul Steel. Maybe not, because you're just going to lose your, your, your Meyer Shambler immediately. Yeah, well, he's going to lose his Meyer Shambler to the to the charge coil, ether pump, whatever. And so he's gonna lose it anyways, maybe Dam and Curse the the Machine Devinator. He could have soul stole this, but I think yeah, he probably the Tom Giant is much more potent than than her. Than uh Heart Spuggler. So he is able to get he has four creatures on the board. Too bad they're almost all gonna die this turn. And he doesn't have a watcher. But he got he was able to take down one idol. He was able to take down an idol. Um, and maybe probably Alright, so he does sudden eruption and that destroys everything. That's a board clear and King Kiwi has destroyed his first idol. Up oh, those those two guys up top had pretty bad misses this turn. Okay. So now next turn King Kiwi can just go back to pinging with Solemn Giant because he has another one in hand. Um this is kind of it for Kryle. There's like, there's really no way he's going to come back now. Now that King Kiwi has six cards, there's, he's always going to have an answer for whatever Kryle puts down. So there's not even that small chance that he gets really lucky. Now it's like, now it's like, King Kiwi will have, a, will have a, an answer. So here, just probably just Solemn Giant hit this idol. Start sacrificing more resources. Or yeah, down here is also fine because maybe the gun automaton can destroy it next turn that idol. If you if and if Carl puts something in front of it to protect it, he has like machine chant and melt dispersal, another bounce dispersal to clear the row for that. So it's looking looking good for Carl. He could possibly win next turn. Probably will. What's going on in chat down here? Yeah, that mortar. That mortar. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Cause we see the match chat. Oh, okay. Is that game? Pump? No, it's not game. It's close to game though. Actually, yeah, it's game. GG BC this attack. So that's the win. Um. It's GG. King Kiwi played pretty well. Kraw played well too, but I think his misplays early in the early game where he didn't really ramp up to where he needed to be. And Kaldon's like a soul sit for a little too long. I think that hurt him ultimately. Um, so I wish you could see the rating differences in, um, in Spectate. See, Structure Energy only took 8 minutes uh, for the total turn, so. Even though it's a long match usually because a lot of turns, it's really kind of just like a lot of turns are you don't have to think that hard, you just put down a structure and stuff like that. Yep. Okay. So uh That will be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you want more content like this. Like the video if you enjoyed, and um keep on scrolling, scrollgers. I'll see you next time.